Hi, this is Rod with Precision Zone, and I'm going to be showing you how to do a basic check on a Yaskawa spindle encoder using an oscilloscope. So, with your machine powered on, I need you to go ahead and find your spindle junction box. It's going to normally be on the top of the machine. Go ahead and get the junction box cover off, and it's probably going to be helpful to remove the two screws that hold down 12 pin connector and lift them up so you can have better access to it. Now when you have that all set, you're gonna go ahead and turn on your machine and you can verify that you have power to your encoder by taking a digital multimeter, turning it to the DC setting and checking between pin one and two. And we have five volts. Now pin one is always going to be red and that's your five volt positive. The pin number two is right next to it. That's going to be your black, which is your negative. The pin three next to that is going to be green. That's your A. Pin four right next to that is going to be your A naught. Okay, then when you move down to pin five and six, that's going to be your B, B naught. And then seven, eight will be your Z and Z naught signals. The rest of them are just shields and thermals. So you'll have to have an oscilloscope and the basic knowledge on how to use it. On your probes, you're going to need longer ends instead of short fat ends to be able to dig down into that connector. Now, when you do turn on the drive, or when you, tur when you turn on your machine, Obviously, if you have a bad encoder, it's not going to run. And if you turn your machine on and you command the spindle to run, if it is running, you should see on the back of the drive, uh, RPM. And you should be able to see the RPM of the spindle head going clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna have to have an assistant spin the spindle head if the encoder is not working and you just wanna verify what's wrong. So they'll spin the spindle head and you're gonna take your probes and you're gonna stick one side of the probe into the A channel, which is number three, and the ground channel, which is number four. Now once they're making a solid connection, when that person spins the spindle head, you're going to get some type of DC pulse. Now what's most important about this pulse is that it's symmetrical. And you'll have to adjust your seconds over divisions to get it to be able to be visible. Because we can shrink it down and almost make it disappear. Or we can scoot it all the way out and just barely see that. So it's all about the rotation that the spindle head is spinning at and the setting on your screen. Now the amplitude should be between three and four volts. And if it's only at one, then you know you have a problem. So that's gonna check the A channel. Then you can switch, reverse the three and four, and then spin the spindle head. And then you're gonna see that same DC pulse. And what you're really just, what you're really concerned about is that the amplitude is between three and four volts and that it's symmetrical. Now, when you move to the B channels on pins uh, five and six, it's gonna look to your eyes identical, but then between seven and eight is the Z's, Z and Z naught. Now, if your machine is running, but it's not orientating, it may have lost its Z signal. Now, Z is a lot harder to find than A and B, but keep trying and adjusting your scope. And what you're really just gonna see, unless you can trigger in on it, is you're just gonna see a blip. And so that's all you're really looking for. On the, and so as long as you see that blip, you know you have your Z, then flip the probe, in the probe ground around. 
have the person spin it again. And now we know we have both Z and Z naught signals. <coughs> so one of the things you definitely don't want to ever do is put the five volt power to any of the signals. If you do that, you will blow up the encoder and then you're gonna to have to pull it and send it in to us for repair. So if you have any questions about this procedure, and we will have the pinout available through precisionzone.com so you can have a printable layout of it. And please always reach out to us about any of the procedures we have at precisionzone.com. I hope this video was helpful and it'll help you troubleshoot your machine in the future. And here we perform free evaluations on our motors and we provide 12 month warranties on all of our motor repairs. Thanks for watching.